Hello again, it's Cliff here from Down Under. In this video, I'm going to do a run of these parts in the Slant Pro 15L. Um, I'm going to be using a parts catcher so I don't damage the part as it is parted off, and also a stock stop, and one or two other details will be covered. If you're interested in uh, my take on the Slant Pro 15L, um, I got the machine a couple of years ago and about that time I did a series of about 10 videos so if you look back in this channel Thread Express you'll see a series of several videos. Alright well I'll get on with this video. Cheers. Alright so making this part I wanted a good surface finish and I didn't want any damage as it was parted off and fell onto the bed and so on. So I'll just go through the tools and the machining sequence and then I'll run the uh, video. It's a little bit uh, un unclear the video of it running because of the cutting oil but you get a rough idea. So I start off with this ball nose cutter which is a good spotting tool and drill for uh, holes that aren't too deep because it's very stiff and rigid and I've ground a little bit more clearance here than a standard high speed steel ball nose cutter and it allows the uh, chips to flow more freely out the way. So that's the first tool. Then I go to this boring tool and uh, bore out the diameter and put the internal chamfer in. Then I go to this parting tool and part it 90% off. So there's two parting operations, one at this stage and one at the end. Now the reason for that is that if you part it 100% off right at the end, you risk uh, the chips, the swarf, curling up and scoring the already finished critical outside diameters. But by parting at 90% off, it's still held well enough uh, to do the finished machining. Then it turns round to tool number two, this Trigon tool, which does the outside diameter, the face, and the radius and I've stoned a wiper geometry on that so that I get a higher surface finish. After that it returns back to the parting tool and just takes a very small cut to t cut it off and it ends up on this parts catcher wire. Then the turret rotates around once more into a position there and parks it so that that tool becomes the stop for sliding the stock forward.
So for a stop at the end of the program, choose the most suitable tool. For me it's this ball nose cutter which I use for spotting and drilling out the centre hole. Um, and just put in some code to park it in the right place so that you can slide your stock forward and tighten up your chuck there. And uh, that's your stop, nice and easy. Over here we have the parting tool in its rotated position. I'll turn it around so you can have a look at the uh, part catcher there. So the part catcher is just a piece of a piece of one eighth or three mil wire bent to that shape, held in with that cap screw there, and it's just bent so that it enters into the end of the part without contacting it, and when it parts off. It falls down onto that piece of bent wire. Very simple when you've got a part with a hole in the middle. If you don't have a hole in the middle, you've got to think about some sort of wire basket or something like that. Here's another view of that bit of wire with the turret turned around. So I'm just holding it with an M8 cap screw and a washer. Uh, and that's the shape of it, something like that. So that your part ends up just hanging on it. If you don't have a tool or projection that's ideal to use as a stop, of course you can fit a stop somewhere else, just a metal stop, and at the end of your G-code just edit in uh, after the final puck position, turning the turret or your gang position to the, the right station, and then a move in the uh, X and Z to put the stop in the right place so that you can pull your stock forward and touch up against it. So it's just a couple of little hand edited entries at the end of your code. Alright, thanks for watching guys. If you've got any comments, I'd like to hear them. Put them in the comment section below this video. And if I need to make any edits to this video after I've made it, I'll put them in the description below. Cheers.